At Whitchurch First School, Year 2 are building on the assessment for learning skills they learnt in Year 1. A variety of speaking and listening activities provide the children with rich opportunities for peer and self-assessment. Very excited about your business. Oh, lovely. And we've got some very interesting questions for you. This morning, when I dressed up as a queen, it was fantastic. I was very pleased. It actually creates a real buzz in the classroom because the children are becoming engaged. They're not sitting back, they're not getting bored or listless. They're actually listening and they're motivated into what you are saying because they want to learn. How old are you? I'm 80 years old. What's your favourite colour? My favourite colour is a very regal colour, and it's the colour red. What, what is your favourite letter? The letter E and the letter R. For Elizabeth Regina, which means that I am the Queen. Do you like doing a job? I enjoy being the Queen. I like to go to different countries. What I was really looking for in a speaking and listening role was for the children to ask higher order thinking questions. Um, do you enjoy your job? Which actually required a lot more thought into me answering that question. What's your favourite flower? My favourite flower is a rose. It is a very English flower. Any more questions? They're, uh, they ask a lot of questions, this class. They don't they? Lots of useful information. What's your favourite food? My favourite food is roast goose, <gasps> followed by ice cream and jelly. doing some work afterwards. Oh yes, Your Majesty, that's why we wanted to find out so much interesting so information. Maybe. In this school, the associate staff or the teaching partners work completely collaboratively with the teacher. They'll be working with a group of children, they'll be working with individual children, and they will be assessing too. So we do expect actually all of the staff to take part in assessment for learning in the same way and have a common understanding of what it means. Right, look bad. Give Sophie her first instruction. First, Col colour, the apple, dark, dark, green. Well done, well done for remembering to tell her dark. She might have done it light. Right, look bad. She's ready for the next fruit. Which fruit are you going to tell her to colour now? The strawberry. Where is the strawberry? Is it above the orange? So where is it? Can you remember what it's called when something is down here? It is uh, un under. Well done. Under the orange. Well done. What colour does she need to colour the strawberry? Red. Red. Is she colouring all the strawberry red? Can you give her the last instruction? Colour the stem green. Only green? Dark green. Oh, well done, Ugbat. So, Paola, how did the barrier game go with Ugbat this morning? It was m uh, much better than last time. This time she was thinking a bit more for herself about what she was going to be saying next. Mm, good. She thought of things like saying dark green or light green, whereas last That's time... That's a huge improvement, yeah, so wasn't it? prompting yes, her for good, all of that. Good. Um, I still had to help her construct her sentences a bit to yes. help her start yes. her sentences. She seems to have um, a problem with knowing how to begin what she needs to say. Was there any language that she did find particularly difficult? I've been trying to get her to um, use more 
well, for example, getting used to using things like below, yes. above, beside. Yes, so positional words. Yes. Yeah. Maybe when you're working with role play that you could use a lot of the figures for below, mm. beside, on top of, under, uh, so you could use those words. I think I need Just to encourage her more to have a go. Really. Yes. Um, even yes. if I show that I sometimes make mistakes and see if she corrects me and you know, try and say, oh, it's OK to make a mistake. Yes, mm. yes. Assessment for learning here happens every day in a classroom, but a teacher will be watching and seeing, or a member of staff will be watching and seeing what's going on. The post-its might be flying around, a significant achievement might happen and be recorded. So those are the kind of opportunities for assessment that just happen on an ad hoc day-to-day -day basis. But within the curriculum, there are planned opportunities. Now, they're not just opportunities, they're actually, this is what we're going to assess. Can you tell me, can you tell me something about your collage? Uh, Dylan, he's so funny because he put something there. And oh dear. And he was so funny and, and he was decorating lots and lots of things. What was the very first thing that you had to do? Because yes. you didn't put the decorations on first, did no. you? What did you have to do first? First, um, um, Dylan put the notes like that and uh, then, then Dylan put that. And Dylan done all the face of that, and then I uh, put some some a tiny bit of glitter, and then I stick that. And then you, you remember stick what that's that. called? Uh, some stripey thing. The best thing to put to to make it lovely is uh, this bit, that bit. And what are they called? They call some little things. Do you remember what they're called? When I spoke to Sophie about the collages, what we'd actually found was the fact that children were not using the technical vocabulary that we would like them to use. With discussions with my year group, we've actually come up with an action plan for next half term. Maybe with more specific scientific vocabulary and technical vocabulary, we need to display that in the classroom so that the children are seeing it in an everyday environment. Yeah, I'd certainly give that a go because, yes. as you say, if they're seeing it around the classroom, yes. instead of just while they're on that particular subject and yes. we're using it, yes. but it's yes. never used again yes. for yes. the rest of the week, yes. maybe. You are all invited to my royal party. You can wear any clothes. It starts at 2 o'clock and finishes at 4 o'clock. It's at Wheelstone Church. From Adam. Very good. Okay, I want you to talk about something that you liked about his presentation and something that could be better. Up. We're going to have hands down and I'm going to ask hey now what were you talking about? I like that in the beginning he put a loud voice in it. Was there something that you think he could have done better? He couldn't have put a bit of regal in it. A bit more rich. And rich voice. So he could have used a richer voice and a more regal voice. I like, like who? Like the Queen right now. Well done. Alex and Nathan, what were you talking about? We were talking about what we, we liked at the beginning. We liked when he said, you can wear any clothes. He said it really loud. He said it really loudly. Was there something that you think he could have made better? What could he have made better? He could have made it better more writing in the beginning. Oh, well done. Some really good ideas there. I wanted to give the children an opportunity to assess each other. Now, how I would develop it, I would actually ask the children 
to do a lot more on peer assessment but maybe take away what they did like so they would have to actually focus on the one question. Sometimes children are more inclined to listen to each other than they are to us. Rueda, did you find any information about the Queen that you could use in your writing? Her favourite flowers were um, roses. Do you remember oh. why she liked roses? Because why? it's an English flower. Because they were English flowers and that's why she liked roses. Nihal, did you find any information out that you could use in a piece of writing? She liked the letter um, E and R. Did she say why she liked the letter E and R? Dinesh? She liked the word Elizabeth the second and Reginator. That's a really good try. It's a Latin word and it's Regina. Can you remember what it meant? What did the Queen say it meant? Because so so everyone can know um she's she's a Queen of England. That's right. I actually think that um through the role play the situation became very real to them. It's a very successful way of getting children to write using speaking and listening because they need to be able to say it before they can write it. My first one is Queen Elizabeth liked red because it was royal. That's right, it was a royal colour, isn't it? Queen Elizabeth liked roses because it, it was English. That's a very good sentence. OK, right, Nihal, what have you written? She liked the letter E and R because it was in her name. Well done, that's a fantastic sentence. So thumbs up if you, were, if you thought it went really well. In the middle if you found it a little bit difficult and thumbs down if you found it really hard. Nihal, you've got thumbs up. Did, did asking all the questions that helped you to write your sentence today? Yes. Did you put your thumb, did you put your thumb up or did you put your thumb down? Down, because, because it was very hard for me. What would have helped you? To put it on the whiteboard. So if we'd have put some words on the whiteboard for you, that would have made it easier for you to write your sentence? Yeah. I think in year two it's very difficult for teachers not to concentrate on SATs and that we're actually looking at outcomes as opposed to how the children are learning. I actually think it's very important to know how the children are learning. I think that will facilitate SATs results in the end. You're giving them the opportunity to be successful. I think AFL is part of the solution for raising standards in schools, but I think one of the issues with that is it's not that's not enough in itself. I mean, it's, the, it's not just as a result of the assessment, what you've done before the assessment, what you do alongside of the assessment, and what you do after the assessment that actually moves learning on. You can tell children things and then they know it. Is that the same as learning? I think not, probably.